If you're into woodworking, chances are there's a table saw in your garage. If you've ever dreamed about having an automated fence, stick around because I'll show you how to build one. If you're like me, you've probably struggled with setting the exact fence. Whether you have a tape measure or a shiny metal ruler, it's tough, especially if you have a wiggly fence like I do. Once you set the blade, then you got to go back and check the front and the back and repeat the process. This automated table saw fence will do all of the heavy lifting for you. Just enter your desired cut width, run your board through, and if you want, you can double check. This cut was made at two and a quarter inches and check out that precision. Let's get started in building one. The heart of this project are these NEMA 17 stepper motors. I have two of them mounted on both of my fence guides. I designed and 3D printed this little slide with a small quarter 20 nut that rides along a quarter 20 threaded rod. As the stepper motors rotate, you guessed it, the slide slides back and forth. These sliders simply snap into the bottom of my fence. This is a pretty sloppy prototype here. The actual production unit was much tighter. Depending on what your fence is, you may have to design something completely different. I got lucky here and this little slider snapped right into place. A quick view of the CAD model shows a fairly simplistic design. There's a clearance hole for the quarter 20 threaded rod and a small slot for the quarter 20 nut. I do have some small tabs on here to grab the inside of the fence to help it snap fit into position. Here's the schematic I designed for the stepper motor system. I'm using a Teensy 3.2 and that's the brain of the entire process. I'm using an A4988 stepper driver. Just Google that device if you're not sure how to hook them up. I did keep my wiring pretty simple. I have one digital line for the direction, one digital line for the step, and one for the enable. I'm not using MS1, MS2, or MS3, so I am driving one step per pulse. This particular driver will go into 1 16th increments, but I really did not need that kind of resolution. A 200 step motor combined with a 20 thread per inch thread rod gives me a resolution of 0 0.00025 inches, more than enough for my uses. If you get chattering on your stepper motors, make sure you put a large capacitor on the motor V in and the ground. I'm using a buck converter to convert the 12 volt input power down to 3.3 for the Teensy. The 12 volt also gets connected to the A4988 stepper drivers. I'm using an old computer power supply so it made the project nice and cheap. I'm also using a 2.8 inch TFT display with full touch screen capability. Just pause the video and check out the schematic in more detail. A project this complicated, I didn't want to wire things by hand so I went and designed a PCB board. This was all done by brute force. I laid all the traces out manually. It was a bit of a pain and required some jumpers. Then it was off to the garage to etch the PCB boards. I used a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen peroxide to muriatic acid. The etching process takes about 30 minutes to do. From start to finish, this PCB board took several hours to design, etch, drill, and solder. And there's the finished product. My Teensy 3.2, the display, and other components. Now it's time to design the case. I exported a DXF file from the PCB design so I could guarantee fit and position between the case and the PCB board. The process was pretty simple. I started off with a block, I hollowed it out, I added some mounting feet, I added some rounds, and added cutouts for the display, a switch, and the connections for my NEMA 17 motors. And of course, some little mounting tabs so I could screw this thing directly to my table saw. And there's the finished product. You can see the case with all the guts inside. The board that you see here actually has a few additional components. I did have another driver for a servo motor that I was going to hook to the table saw's blade raising and lowering mechanism. Unfortunately, my servo didn't have near enough power for the job. I did make a few mistakes in the back, hence the added jumper wires. Hey, it's version 1.0. I won't spend too much time in the code, but just a quick overview, I did use several libraries for this. I used the infamous ILI 9341T3 driver, so I got some fast updates and some several fonts that delivered with it. I did create my own fonts, some arrows, and a large 7-segment digital display. I also have some additional controls in there for things like sliders, radio buttons, and a few other things. 
I'm also using a flicker-free print library that eliminates flickering when my display updates. If you're wondering what it will take to port this code over to an Arduino, it will require a bunch of code changes. Most of these libraries are intended for a TNC 3.2 or higher. As you can imagine, a bunch of defines from my fonts, pin locations, and other things you typically will do for a microcontroller project like this. I've also got defines for the steps per revolution and the threads per inch. And one of my favorite things is I've got some icons in here for a cute little settings button. Check out the code for my function display icons. Initialize things like your display, the touch, and a few other things. Of course, create all the objects for the buttons, flicker-free objects, and a few other things. I'm using my own code for my stepper drivers, so I have to set the pin modes up manually. A few more lines for creating buttons and setting some default parameters. The real heart of this project here is the slew fence function. Let's take a quick look. Note that I'm using the digital write fast to write signals to my pins. I've got some for the direction, the enable, and the step delays. The big reason why I wrote my own code here is so I can have uh, the ability to get a live update so I can show exactly what the current position is, and I have a stop button just in case things go south. And developing my own stepper code gives me the ability to track the location in case you hit the stop button, you know exactly where you are. The rest of the code sets up menu screens, reads default parameters, and does a few other housekeeping type functions. Let's check out the operation. Plug it in, flip it on, and you're prompted with entering the fence distance. My current fence is exactly 5.25 inches from the blade, so I'll enter that in. Now let's enter the cut with the 4 inches, hit the go button, and the magic happens. Both steppers fire up, and the fence goes from point A to point B. This video is sped up a little bit, the fence doesn't actually go that fast. You do have some additional capability in the settings menu. In the settings, you can always redefine the current position or current location of your fence, and if you want to adjust the parallelism, there's a left and right button to do just that. If you want to have a dynamic readout of your current fence location, you can do that. You do have to slow the motors down significantly though. Note that because of the display update does take time from the servos and you will get a lot of chattering. But seeing a dynamic update of the fence location is kind of fun to watch. You can also work in metric mode if you want to, set the option, and you're ready to go. This was a fun project to build, and it will surely save me hours in cutting scrap. Once I cut a board several times and it was still too narrow. Those days are over with the fence mate. Hit the subscribe button and check out my channel for other cool DIY projects. Thanks for watching.